Um, I'm Comanche, and oftentimes that gets um, put under the heading of race and ethnicity. However, Native identity does not fit into either of those categories perfectly. There are racial elements and there's ethnic elements of it, but at the core of it, we're members of sovereign nations on which the U.S. government is occupying. So not only being Comanche, but I'm also, um, what I would say is native or indigenous, um, which means I'm part of a broader community of all the members of the different sovereign nations in the United States. Um, and oftentimes the different words that I'll use will be native or Indian. Um, I've talked to a lot of people who will say, if I, say, if I ask them too, what does being Comanche means, they'll say it means being Indian. Um, but. So it's also like membership in this kind of broader native community that where there's over 500 different nations in the United States. Um, so it's also really important to remember that each community is like its own country and has its own specific culture. There are some like similarities and overlap and borrowing between different communities, but we're all each individual nations that have our own history and our own practices. Um, but we are all also a part of the general kind of broader Indian community in the United States. But I will note that if you are not native, uh, be careful of using the words Indian or native because uh, I, I don't mind when other native folks use the word native, but often, and depending on the person, uh, a non-native describing someone as native can come off a little uh, weird or <laughs> awkward. And definitely don't use Indian if you're not. <laughs> Um, as an enrolled member, it means that I am legally recognized by the U.S. federal government as being a member of a indigenous sovereign nation in North America. Um, in general, it can mean different things to different members of our community. Some members consider it to be really important and other members um, choose to define our community identity based on our connection to other members in the community, our participation in our social life, and our participation in cultural elements of our community. We have a lot of social events um, that are specifically um, indigenous and Comanche, and um, one of the main ones are kind of regular powwows that we'll have. Um, one of our biggest powwows we have every year is the Comanche Fair, which just happened recently. But we also will host powwows almost every weekend. Different families will host them, different um, community organizations like the Veterans Association or the Little Ponies. Um, and powwows are usually hosted to honor someone or to kind of just enjoy community life and um, have multiple opportunities to honor folks and to dance our traditional dances. Um, because I'm white-coated, I'm not immediately identified as Native, and um, oftentimes I will be conscious of the way I'm presenting myself, either um, if I will communicate that I'm Native or Comanche in a specific way or not. Um, so in terms of everyday like consciousness of the way I'm going to be presenting myself, it definitely influences it. There's also smaller ways where I just think my love of t-shirts that uh, are emblazoned with Comanche in some way um, and kind of a general interest and comfort <laughs> is uh, the different ways they affect my appearance um, or influence it and how I make decisions about it. Um, White-coated is used to refer to someone that doesn't uh, maybe that appears to be, as we understand white to be in America, which is imbued with a lot of power. Um, and because my racial and ethnic background doesn't even fit into those categories themselves, um, it makes it even more complicated. But it basically means that my indigenous identity is not immediately present or obvious to people. Um, so I will get treated as a white woman in society. One of the ways, or one of the other ways that um, being Comanche influences my everyday appearance is that um, it also shows a self-identification that is really important. It's an important aspect of Native identity identity in that you're choosing it since um, oftentimes we've historically not been allowed to. Um, so in particular, when I'm in Lawton, where my community is headquartered, um, I will choose often to like wear more beaded earrings, to do other um, like small little symbolic um, accessories that show I'm Comanche. 
And part of that is so that um, other folks who don't know me down there can know that we're a part of the same group. And other part, the other really important part of it is to show that I'm choosing this identity, that I'm not someone who's Comanche like on the books, but is not choosing to um, really associate myself with um, kind of our community and our different cultural elements. Um, and then when I am not in indigenous spaces, I oftentimes will potentially wear a t-shirt um, as a way to communicate it, but sometimes I'll just choose not to really show any um, aspect of my native identity overtly because a lot of times it will lead to more uncomfortable questions or um, maybe emotional aspects of my identity that I don't really want to engage with casually or it often gives me some um, sometimes knowledge that of what is being talked about for different native folks when we're not in the room. If Since I'm not like easily identified as indigenous, I often get to kind of um, fly under the radar and be in spaces where Native folks are being talked about, but the assumption is that they're the other and they're not present in the conversation. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I have a particular example of um, when I've been wearing something that indicates my Comanche identity and then something that's followed. Usually what happens is, depending on who I'm talking to, I will offhandedly mention that I am Comanche or that I am Indigenous. Um, and if I am, do happen to be wearing a t-shirt or something that indicates that, usually that will be a later thing where I'm like, yeah, no, I, <laughs> but, um, the main microaggression I experience is that, um, when I do tell someone who's not indigenous that I am and what member, um, of what community I'm a member of, the question I will get asked is, well, how much are you? which in terms of Native identity, there's no like how much. There is a blood quantum for our enrollment, which is a fraction um, based on US government guidelines of like some really uh, racist history with ideas of DNA and genetics and the way that all works and how you could potentially, the US government believed that they could dilute um, Native identity enough to basically wipe us all out. So that's where the blood quantum comes in. Um, so I do have a blood quantum fraction, but that doesn't signify the amount of Comanche I am. It just signifies it for the US government in their intention. But a lot of times folks don't know that that can be a really offensive question if you ask how much you are something. It's equivalent to asking, yes, but where are you really from? <laughs> so the Comanche community has um, a really rich traditional dress. Um, we often term it as regalia um, or by the specific name of the outfit. Um, also, just something to be cognizant of, um, there are a lot of indigenous folks who find the term regalia to be a little offensive because it um, compares it to kind of a different style of dress than um, what our traditional dress is inherently, which is based more in uh, spiritual practices and religious practices, um, as well as cultural practices. It's not, regalia often implies like a sense of royalty or like a dress up or a fancy dress, um, whereas traditional dress is kind of inherent to also Comanche like religious identity and cultural identity. Um, but yes, we have a lot, and um, it can take many forms. And um, our two primary that I um, have been looking at and I'm interested in are our tea dress, which is um, a cloth dress that's in the shape of a tea that Comanche women wear, and the buckskin dress, which Comanche women wear. And then um, Comanche men um, will wear a buckskin shirt and buckskin leggings, um, as well as a lot of other different accessories. And, um, or for board dancing, they will um, wear like a pattern shirt or a ribbon shirt. Um, and some of, the, some of these different elements, like the ribbon shirt, have been taken from other communities. Um, but uh, yeah, the buckskin dress and tea dress are inherent to us, as well as headdresses. Yeah, one of our main, um, that most folks have probably encountered in some regard is um, our headdress or our war bonnet as it's sometimes termed, which is um, comprised of multiple eagle feathers. Um, however, um, it's really important to note that um, they're not just a decorative, they're not like a crown, they're not something that everyone can wear. Um, different bands in our community have different ideas on um, 
whether or not women can wear eagle feathers, who's allowed to wear eagle feathers, what do eagle feathers signify, but primarily um, eagle feathers are something that's gifted to you um, because you've done something honorable. So wearing a headdress of multiple eagle feathers really signifies like the actions and the service you've done for your community or the larger community. Um, in the United States, so it's not something to be seen as an accessory or part of a fun, like, I don't know, concert attire. It's, it's something that has a lot of significance and meaning that I could, I could compare it to um, different medals you would wear if you were in the United States military, um, that while, like, fashion often borrows, but for the people who have earned those medals or who have earned their stripes, have a lot of significance and a lot of meaning and kind of using them as a uh, just kind of fun accessory that adds some interest is really awful. <laughs> so the Comanche or what I could what I would term kind of Comanche traditional dress can be really broad too. Um, usually it's also kind of delineated by what would be appropriate to wear into the powwow ring. Um, for some dances and some activities, it is appropriate just to wear a shawl. Um, so in that regard, I for sure have worn traditional dress in the sense of like, when I participate in an otter dance, I will wear my shawl that was gifted to me by my aunt into the ring. Um, recently too, um, my aunt brought me my great grandmother's dress and I was able to wear it at a family reunion and now she's making me uh, my own dress, which is exciting. But um, in general, I haven't worn a ton of traditional community dress other than the shawl that you have to wear when you're gonna go in the ring. Uh, the primary place you would wear community traditional dress would be at a powwow or some kind of dance. Um, but also folks will wear certain elements of it kind of in their everyday life sometimes. Um, there's a kind of nationally recognized day called Rock Your Mocks where like all indigenous folks will try to wear the moccasins that they have. Um, which you, if you want to count moccasins as traditional dress, that can be it. But primarily the, the true dress that has ritual and spiritual meaning to it would be either in the powwow ring or um, if you're participating in a particular ceremony.